Want to rumble with the B? Well, after this list, they might put a hex on the whole family. Yep, it's time to rank Beyonce's discography. Come join your boy. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the Soul and Stereo Sessions here on YouTube, episode number two. We did it. Thanks for joining us. And you know it's YouTube. You know how you do. So if you're watching right now, go on and hit that like. Go on and hit that subscribe button. Do all the stuff that you know you're supposed to do. Don't worry about, is this video going to be dope? Of course it's going to be dope. That's why you clicked on it in the first place. So go ahead, hit those buttons. Help your boy out. So today we are going to hit our first ever album ranking. If you're a fan of soulandstereo.com, you already know how it goes. Everybody loves the album rankings, unless I don't rank your favorite album in a way that you intend. Oh well. But today we're going to take a look at some albums that I've ranked in the past, but this is an opportunity using YouTube to give it a nice little update. And we're going to start with your girl, Yes, Beyonce. We're just rolling out the gate on this one. I'm going to get in trouble for real. Beyonce, of course, needs no introduction from Destiny Child beginnings to being basically the measuring stick for pop culture success today. Beyonce is known by just one name because that's all you need to know. She has pretty much revolutionized not just R&B, but hip hop and pop music in general. And over that time, ever since her early days of 1998, we've seen her grow. We've seen her become the biggest in her industry, but we also seen some great albums and some not so great albums. So today we're gonna go through and rank her discography from bottom to top. Now keep one thing in mind with my album rankings. This is just a solo ranking. So no Destiny's Child on this list. That'll be a separate list. Besides, I didn't want to put Destiny's Child on this list because I probably rank those albums higher than a lot of her solo albums. And then y'all going to be mad. So fight amongst yourselves in the comments if you want to discuss that. We'll get back to that another time. So join me as we get ready to rank Beyonce's LPs from bottom to top. And hopefully I won't piss off too many Beehive members along the way. Beyonce? I'm talking about Beyonce. Look, y'all, I happen to live with a card carrying Beehive member, so I think she might be chiming in a time or two. This is going to be interesting. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. Coming in at number eight is the Lion King album. That's what I call it. The Lion King soundtrack, The Gift. I'm going to tell you why it lasts since you asked. I'll give you this, though. It's better than the movie. I'll say that much. But overall, it was a really ambitious project. Beyonce was able to kind of get a bunch of international artists together to bring a really international sound to this one. And even though I am quite tired of the Afro beats, y'all doing too much with them. I mean, this was an authentic realization of that sound. So this album was able to kind of do that, plus play off of the Lion King theme in general. But even though it has all of those sounds, it's a little disjointed as some soundtracks can be. So even though there's some good things, overall, it's kind of skippable in Miss Knowles Carter's album discography. Blasphemy. <sighs> in at number seven is Dangerously In Love. Yes, the first Beyonce album, the solo thing that was filled with lots of singles, lots of hit singles, and this was so highly anticipated. But to be honest, looking back and at the time, putting nostalgia aside, it's just kind of okay. Yeah, it's got the big singles. It's got the, the album cuts that kind of we can revisit. 
But overall, there's a lot of so so stuff. I'm looking she at you. She had to grow. She had to grow as an artist. <sighs> and she could grow, but she could grow with some better songs if we're gonna do that. Hip hop star. No, uh uh. I don't want to hear no excuses for that. That's how I like it. Yeah, I ain't hear no excuses for that. It's an okay debut, but nothing like the star studded, trend setting bomb that we were kind of expecting in 2003. Sorry. Right. Coming in at number six, I am Sasha Fierce. Remember that time? Remember that time Beyonce had an identity crisis? Y'all remember that time? Those were good days. Now, again, this is a double disc album, and most of you know how I feel about double disc albums. It's too much going on. To her credit, though, this one isn't very long. It feels a lot more condensed than a two disc album should be, which means your faves have no excuses for these four hour behemoths that you put on my playlist every other week. Tighten these albums up. To that end though, there is a little bit of inconsistency with this one because there are some great tracks on both sides, but then it also feels like a little bit of filler on both sides as well. Even though it's not a super long project, if she took the best from column A, best from column B, would have much better out. Coming in at number five, everything is love from the Carters. Don't you love love? We have love. Except when I talk about Beyonce stuff, so then we don't have love. Anyway, this is one of those dream releases, really. You have two of the biggest artists of their genre. Beyonce absolutely running, popping R&B. Got Jay-Z, who is one of the goats of his time. Top five for me, easily. Top three. Top three. We'll say top three. Sorry, Jay fans. Big and Oz got it. Clearly big back there. So this is a great release between the two of them. And it's really a great celebration of Black love. It's very strongly produced. And we know that the two have chemistry. I mean, we went and saw the, what was the tour called? That had on both the of them? On the Run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The on the Run tour. Yes, that was actually a pretty good showing. And they showed their chemistry here. That exudes throughout this project. My one complaint, though. You always got a complaint. Yes, yeah, so I have to complain when it's about rapping Beyonce. Yes, rapping Beyonce, we don't need... Well, I'll say this. The She's, world needs rapping Beyonce. The world did not need 7-Eleven. You can keep that at the store. But when it comes to rapping Beyonce, look, players, I appreciate it in small doses, but after a while, it starts leaning on self-parody. She raps better than half these folks that y'all put on my timeline. Exactly. Yeah, but the bar ain't too high. Great album, though. This is a very solid release, but she could dial back on some of the tracks. And coming in at number four is the album um, four. I didn't do that on purpose. I promise. I didn't do it on purpose. Now, I got in trouble back in the day on Soul and Stereo when I originally ranked this and when I reviewed it way back when that dropped. I gave it a three and a half out of five. What is that? Well, I'll tell you what that is. Even though I really appreciate this album, your girl is doing a whole lot of that over singing. Now, she has dialed that back in recent years, but I cannot when she was going out of control with them runs and it, uh, like, no, that was actually messing up quite a few songs. You just hate. <sighs> Thanks. I was hating on them runs. But overall, I know this album is celebrated, especially among R&B lovers, because it's kind of seen as the last R&B Beyonce album. And I get that. And there is a lot of strong stuff here. So along with that nostalgia, along with celebrating the last time R&B fans got to hear the Beyonce they came up on before she went full-blown pop and full-blown trap, this one has really holds a special place in many people's hearts. And for me, I think it has some of her best album cuts. I Miss You, one of Beyonce's best songs, and y'all still sleeping. Finally, something we agree on. Finally. Ooh. 
Coming in at number three, and I know some people are getting their feelings, is Beyonce's Lemonade. Conceptually, let's speak conceptually. Conceptually, this album is a near masterpiece when it comes to the storytelling and the actual narrative being said. I love that Beyonce is very open and honest about her relationships. And look, because some of y'all missed the message on this one. It's called Lemonade. She took lemons and made lemonade. The album isn't a Jay-Z diss track. The album is an opportunity to talk about how you can repair broken relationships. That's why this album really succeeds. To that end, though, the second half of the album isn't quite as strong as the first half for me. There are a couple of so-so tracks in there. Kind of loses its way. But even beyond that, it's still a stellar release and one of the best of the previous decade. And look, before we go to our top two spots, got to remind y'all to visit soulandstereo.com if you want to see just a few more of these album rankings. Look, player, I got a million of them, from Beyonce to Brandy to Jay-Z to Kanye to whoever else you want. I got Babyface, whoever you can think of. I probably rank their albums. Go check that out there. We'll be bringing a few more of those on YouTube for your viewing pleasure. So check that out there. Of course, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and let's get to the top two. Coming in at number two, Beyonce's self-titled release, Beyonce. The album that changed everything, not just for Beyonce, but for the freaking world. Yes, the album that changed the world. <sighs> it certainly changed my world. You want to know why everybody wants their fave to drop a surprise album? This album. You want to know why people don't promote their albums like they're supposed to anymore? This album. And by the way, she did promote this album. She did a surprise and promoted it after. If you're going to steal from the woman, at least do it right. Number three. If you want to know why albums now come out on Fridays, and not Tuesdays, like when we used to go to Best Buy for $9.99. It's this album. This album absolutely revolutionized the industry. And for me, and for most fans, it's the album that put her on top of the pop game. She kind of started that trend with single ladies and was moving toward there. But this is where she solidified herself as the preeminent pop star of the generation. And it's because she was able to marry all of her sounds. It's got the R&B, it's got the pop, it's got the hip hop, but it's all together in one package that's pretty seamless. I don't think it's her best, but it's definitely the one that has defined her the most. Since we're talking about the best, let's talk about number one, the best Beyonce album, according to me. And that's all you need to know. B-Day. You love that album. Well, I'm going to tell you why I love that album since you asked. I know that these Beehive members, I know I'm talking about you, so don't roll up on me. I know Beehive members that just came on in the Beyonce era, maybe the single ladies era don't get it. They look back at this one and say, oh, this is okay. This is too hip-hop for me. Well, let me tell you, the OGs can speak to this a little bit better than the children. Because when it comes to Beyonce's albums, one criticism that I've had throughout this list, if you listen, is consistency throughout. Her best shot at that was the Beyonce album, sure, when it comes to notoriety. But song for song, if you're looking at cohesive structure, this album has it in spades. It's the one album that I can listen to from her, that I can play pretty much front to back. Great sequencing, great songs, songs that have defined her career that quite honestly don't get the credit that they deserve. And for me, it was the peak of both her R&B sound and her more hip hop leaning sound. She was able to do it all with this one release. To me, the greatest Beyonce album of all day, all time, B-Day. Got my days mixed up there. All right, wifey, so how did I do on this one? Well, I disagree with your number one, but I don't know. I guess I'll let you stay here. Thanks for allowing me to have another roof over my head for a little while longer. At least till the next video when you get mad at me about that. So anyway, thank you for joining me. 
This edition of the Soul and Stereo Sessions is a wrap. Play on, players.